Good morning, uh, and this morning I've got a confession to make. Uh, during the New Year break, we all went down to uh, Cornwall. Uh, we had a couple of nights down there. Uh, we all drove down as a family, met some friends, stayed over and drove back. It was about a 300 mile round trip. Uh, did I go in my leaf? I'm afraid I didn't. I went in this instead. So why am I telling you that? I could quite happily have um, said nothing and carried on singing the virtues of EVs forevermore. But um, it's come about because I've had a couple of uh, personal messages sent to me recently from people that watch the channel asking me about uh, EVs and what EVs they should buy. The messages have gone along the lines of, uh, this is the amount of mileage I do, this is where I live, what do you think is the right EV for me to get? Or, what size battery should I get? Uh, it's kind of, it's a very personal question. It's a really difficult question to answer. The whole point of me kind of doing this channel and talking about everyday experiences of EVs isn't just to sing their praises all the time. It's to show their limitations as well. Now, the trip that I did was uh, 150 miles there, 150 miles back. It was uh, the south coast of Cornwall, just the other side of Plymouth, uh, in a very kind of remote rural area. There was no destination charging there. Uh, the closest charger was about 30 miles away, I think, from where I was staying. Uh, certainly the closest rapid charger. Uh, I did some driving around when I was there. Um, I could have done it. You know, I could have planned the trip. Uh, it's all A roads. I think I sat on the M5 for about five minutes. So there was one service station I could have gone to Ecotricity for. Uh, I would have needed a minimum of two charges each way. Um, it was, it was doable. I could have planned it. And do you know, if I was going on my own, I probably would have taken my leave. The reason I didn't comes about from, well, it's kind of, I guess, two and a half years of ownership and my stubbornness of saying, we're going to take this leaf everywhere. I want to use it. I want to prove it works. Uh, and I think it culminated in that trip to and certainly coming back from Manchester when Sarah was with me. Uh, and it wasn't just the amount of stops and the extra time it put on because you kind of accept that uh, in case you're not aware my leaf is a 24 kilowatt hour one um, and I drove from the south coast up to Manchester and back again uh, the stops were fine I could get over that Sarah was getting a little bit uh, annoyed with them because it's a half hour stop every time it's when the chargers aren't working it's when you have an issue with a charger that there isn't another one close by and um, the kind of what really ruined that trip home was uh, I, there was two polar chargers within five miles of each other. I had the one that I wanted to go to and the other one was my backup. They were both offline and it caused us no end of problems. Still made it home, still didn't run out of power. So on this occasion, driving back from Cornwall, um, we drove back on New Year's Day because Sarah was back in work on the 2nd. Uh, we couldn't be late back. We couldn't afford not to get back that night. Uh, and as per usual, Sarah still had work to do before she went back the following day. So we had to get home. Um, and I just thought, you know what? It's easier. It's easier to take the petrol car on this occasion. Um, and dare I say it, it was quite nice. It was almost a, a little bit of a relief. And um, the reason I say that is because I fueled it up the day before, I drove there, I drove around while I was there, and I drove home again. I didn't think at all, or have to think, about planning a route. Now, I don't dislike doing that, but I've done it for two and a half years, and to go back to not having to think about it, it was almost a relief in a way. It was quite, quite a pleasant journey. Now, that doesn't take away from the fact that it was really noisy, and there was times when uh, we were using our phones, even the hands-free, and, uh, we had to end phone calls because we couldn't hear each other. So that wasn't pleasant. Um, obviously, it cost me money because I had to put um, petrol into it. Uh, and it, it's nowhere near as comfortable. We, we came out in the morning, it was iced up. And yeah, all the usual things that you get from moving away from your electric car. So I'm not saying it was perfect. I'm just saying that it was interesting to go back to that. Now, looking forward, if I had well, if I had the 30 kilowatt hour leaf, would I have done it? I think that might have been kind of borderline for me. I may or may not have done it on that. Probably one stop, I might have been able to get away with 
knowing that there's an Ecotricity charger that I can rely on um, on the M5, I, I might well have done that. Um, 40 kilowatt hour leaf, the new one, yeah, I would have definitely, uh, definitely have done that and anything above that I would definitely use. Oh, the preheat's on in here, it's nice and warm. Uh, so, what I'm trying to say is that when you're looking to buy an EV, it's really important to be honest with yourself uh, and not just think about when you first buy the EV and uh, how exciting it is to have it because at that point you're going to be happy to stop and charge in at any uh, charge at any point because it's all new and it's all exciting think six months 12 months down the line more than that when actually it starts becoming a bit of a chore and is a small battery like a 24 kilowatt hour one really sufficient for you uh, the answer might be absolutely yes so for example today uh, we're going um, to Christchurch it's a kind of a seaside town um, it's about oh, I don't know 12 miles from here um, the reason we're going there is we're going to stay um, in a hotel there tonight Sarah and I were dropping the kids off with the grandparents uh, it was Sarah's birthday last week so it's um, a bit of a celebration we're gonna have a dinner out tonight and it's all very nice um, the trip itself in total so driving from here to Christchurch dropping the kids off, uh, night in Christchurch, then going to pick them up and drive back here is about 40, 45 miles. Uh, that is well within the range of this, this car. Um, no issues whatsoever. And uh, the majority of the trips we do in this car are well within the range. Now that has kind of, I've had to reevaluate a little bit recently because uh, we, or well, I changed where I was working. Uh, I was working 12 miles away, I now work 40 miles away. That's an 80 mile round trip. In a 24 kilowatt hour leaf, you could do it, but you'd get very, very bored driving there and back because you would have to do 50, 50 mile, five mile an hour uh, all the way. And when there's dual carriageways and fast A roads, uh, you're not gonna be doing that and um, fall out with the car. And ultimately, uh, again, I've had people message me saying, do you know what? I've given it a go. Uh, two years down the line, I can't. I can't bear it anymore. I'm going to go back to an ice car, and once the batteries and the cars uh, are able to do what I want them to do at a price I can afford, then I'll go back to it. But um, you know, don't put yourself in that um, situation where you've spent because they're not cheap. You spend a load of money on one of these cars uh, with kind of rose tinted glasses on uh, only to find that, as I say, six months, 12 months, you're regretting making that decision. Don't put yourself off. Um, so uh, I've had to stop using this car to go backwards and forwards to work in and um, it's not the end of the world Sarah uses it she works uh, seven miles away from home so a 14 mile um, trip every day perfectly within the capabilities of this car um, I take the petrol car it's now costing me money yeah if you follow my vlogs you'll know that I'm looking for another EV that can do that journey for me that 80 mile journey and um, it's all kind of at the moment on hold to wait and see what the new um, leaf is like see whether we're going to buy that and then on the back of that what I can then afford as a second car so really in a nutshell what I want you to think about if you're thinking of buying an EV is be honest with yourself what do you do every day in your car is that mileage within the capabilities and I mean really within it not or I'm a couple of miles to spare you know give yourself 15 miles within those capabilities uh, that will allow for when it gets really cold really hot or you you know you drive a bit quicker whatever the situation is give yourself plenty of um, room to maneuver is my everyday driving well within that for the battery size that I'm looking at don't worry what the car is the car it's like anything it's it's a car if it is well within it, then absolutely, you've got nothing to worry about. Go for it, you'll save yourself a fortune, you'll love it, it's um, you know, it's the future. I, I keep saying it, uh, nothing will put me off. I know that EVs are where we're going. If you're regularly gonna be tight on the mileage, or if you regularly do longer miles where you have to rely on charging, then really be honest with yourself and this is where these week-long test drives really come into their own um, look at the charge post you're going to stop at are there mul multiple charge points there can you afford 30 minutes every time you stop to charge uh, can you 
can you put up with that? Can you, you know, how many stops do you do en route? Do you just do the one stop, in which case grab yourself a coffee, uh, it's no issues, or do you have to do three? In which case you've just put an hour and a half on your journey and um, is that gonna really annoy you? Um, and are you like me? You can put up with that. You're happy because it, you know you like a gadget, you like something new, uh, you enjoy the car that much. Whatever your reason is, can you put up with it? But is it just about you? Do you have, like for example, Sarah, she won't do those long journeys with me in this car. Ask yourself all these questions. And if you start answering yes to any of those questions, um, how many of those yeses can you put up with? If it is just a case of, yeah, or I can, I, I can do one charge every day on every journey for half an hour, then fine, brilliant. So be 100% honest with yourself and then you will not regret it in the future. Uh, you'll love driving the EVs, uh, you'll love everything they offer. Uh, just be realistic on what size battery you need and how much you wanna spend. And if it's not right at the moment, let's be honest, they're like mobile phones. Six months time, there's gonna be a, a, a whole raft of new EVs, 12 months time, even more, 18 months time. You know, the 60 kilowatt hour Leaf hopefully will be out then uh, at a reasonable price and it's another option again. So once we start getting through that 200 and up towards 300 mile range, then this kind of whole conversation becomes obsolete uh, because charge rates will be faster and we'll be able to go further for longer. So um, with that in mind, uh, thanks ever so much for watching today. Hopefully it's been helpful to you. Uh, hopefully it's answered some of those questions that I keep getting asked um, in my inbox. Uh, and um, good luck if you're searching for an EV. I'm sure there'll be one out there. If it's not now, uh, within the next 12 months, that will suit your needs. So um, if you've enjoyed today's vlog, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel uh, and you can find me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at EV Opinion. Uh, take care. See you soon.